everybody welcome back to our channel Kono Pro in this video we're going to be building a fence we're going to be replacing that old chain link fence and throwing in a new horizontal dog-eared fence plank fence but we're cutting the dog ears off it's going to have a really clean cool look we're going to paint the fence at the end but you can also stain it you can leave it clear coat we're also installing a redwood cap on top of the fence so stay tuned this video hope you enjoy all right, so now we're just gonna go through all the old chain link fence, and we're gonna take some uh, clippers, and we're gonna go through and clip all of the wire supports that just wrap around all of the tube steel on the chain link. If you go through and you clip all of those wire supports, then there's usually one long wire that runs through the bottom of the chain link, that one right there, and if you cut that all along the bottom, then you usually could just remove all of the chain link from the post and roll it up into one big roll and recycle it of course and then after you're done with that you can just start popping off the, the poles they, they all start coming to get coming apart pretty easily sometimes taking the poles out of the ground are a little difficult sometimes they're not so now what I do is I set my first post and I set all four corners okay and I, I dig the hole and then I set the post I put it in concrete I set all four corners and that way I can pull my dry line and then I can pull my dry line, which that's what that dry line is right there. And then I can basically have my total perimeter of my fence. And then I can do my layout on my dry line, use a little marker, and I can mark my layout. You wanna make sure all your posts are level and, and secure and really set in the concrete well. And then uh, after you have your layout, you can start setting your post. You see those three lines right there? That's my layout for my next post. And I have a center mark and my outside and inside line. So once we have that done, we can uh, start digging all of our post holes once we lay out all of our posts. So right here, you see, I'm just gonna sort of throw a stake down and I'm gonna measure out five foot. The, the fence planks are six foot. So I usually like to go five foot so that way my fence planks can land center of my post. And then I measure out to make sure, you see that section right there? I wanna make sure that section matches the other side as best as possible. So if I have like a four foot section on the right, and like a four foot section on the left, and then even it out in between the middle. You see right there, there's an old pole that just was really stubborn and wouldn't come out. So you just cut it with a sawzall. And you wanna make sure if you do that, you don't, that's not where you choose your layout for your post. So pay attention to things like that and you'll be cool. And uh, now I'm doing the other side and I'm just going to show you so I have my line set I'm pulling my dry line you want to pull it real nice and taut and then I'm going to start doing my layout for my post so I throw my stakes down cool that's about where we want to be and then I'm going to start setting post for post so I'll set a post and then I'll have it set I'll level it I'll put my stakes on I'll have it all ready to go then I'll hook onto that post and I'll measure to my next post and then I, and then I'll do the same process all over again until I have all the posts set. That way I know for sure my fence planks will fit in between the post because they're only six feet and then when you cut off the dog-eared part of the fence plank you're cutting off like three inches and then you I always cut off the back end too, the bottom of the fence plank because it's a factory edge is not a square cut so you're gonna lose three and a half four inches of the fence plank so you want to make sure you measure in between your posts properly to install your fence planks. And here I am leveling off my post and you, it's a little bit of a process once you start doing it you'll get your own little you know groove going and you'll figure it out but I like to set one stake and then bring the post level it off and then set the inside stake level it off and then you can take the screws and back them out and make adjustments whatever you need to make sure it's level then after that's done I like to set two extra screws in the stakes to really lock it down tight So now I'm just repeating the process and once I have my next post set then I go to my next post and then I take my post hole digger I dig it out and then I have a little a little uh, pry bar that has a round end on it and I use that to pack 
the dirt in real good on the bottom. And I also like to throw some three and a half inch decorated screws in the bottom of the post when I set it down in my hole. That way when you set your concrete, it really locks in and it won't allow it to sort of pull out straight up. So I repeat this process, boom, see I'm marking on my line, center of my next post, I'm double checking all my measurements, everything's set, now we're gonna start rocking on the concrete. So I'm using some 60 pound bags, they're a little easier to maneuver, when I like to cut them, do one to two in a bag at a time, in a wheelbarrow at a time. Um, add a little water, give it a mix until you have a nice consistency, you don't want it too wet, and you don't want it too dry. And then just go ahead and bore it in your holes, and then let that set overnight, unless you're using a fast set post setting concrete because you need to get the fence done in a day which is awesome i do that a lot too but if not and you have the next day then go ahead and set your concrete wait for the next day and we'll begin the next process Alright, so now it's the next day and we're going to remove all of our stakes that we're using to keep the post level. And once we remove all, the, all of those stakes, then we can start leveling all of our, basically leveling over the height of our fence from post to post. And like I was telling you before, since it's the span between my posts are less than 5 foot, then I can use a 6 foot level and I can just score over really easy. It's nice and easy. And on this fence, we're having two elevations. We're going to have a high point and then right down where it tapers down to, you know, the, the sidewalk right there, we're going to have a little bit of a lower point. So if you have something like that in the design of your fence, you just want to make sure that your posts are all high enough. That way, when you go through and you make your lines to the height you want, you can cut them down and it will all line up perfectly. See, those are my lines and then that's my next elevation. See, I'm a high elevation right there and then that's going to be my low elevation. And then that lower elevation is going to shoot all over to the rest of the, that's going to be the height for all the front posts. And then the first couple on the return on that side, which you'll see right here. See, so then I'll go through and I'll cut all those. And then on this side, I have the other height. height. So here I am with my beam saw. It's a big foot beam saw. And I'm going through and just cutting off the post. And then now I'm going to go through and put some horizontal supports in the middle. Okay, now this helps keep your fence really strong and then it allows you to put another vertical support in the middle. And the reason why I always do these horizontal supports and another vertical support in the middle, it helps keep your fence planks from bowing. Okay, if not, then you'll get these, all these, your fence planks will start bowing and all this stuff if you don't have enough supports behind your fence planks. So I like to add these horizontal fence planks and then I like to add a vertical uh, fence plank, or excuse me, support for my fence planks and then once that's all done um, then I'm going to go through and countersink everything with screws which you'll see here in a minute but one more thing I'd like to mention when you're cutting this moisture treated wood you want to do it on a piece of plastic which I did have it on a piece of plastic that way you can catch all of that that uh, sawdust because it's treated it has chemicals in it you don't want it on your yard so just make sure you dispose of that properly and uh, as you can see, everything's basically ready to rock. I'm about to start putting in my vertical supports in between all those horizontal supports here in a minute. But first I'm going to do some countersinking and show you how I'm doing that. I'm taking a pilot with the countersink and I'm just going to go through every single seam, like section where they connect. And I'm going to do a, um, uh, I'm going to pilot a hole in there and I'm toenailing it. So I'm basically toenailing, it means I'm going in at an angle from my 2x4 to my support. I'm going to go through and screw in all my holes, and then I'm going to go through and just put in all my screws. And the, the front support, of course, you can't get to the bottom, you know, underneath that. So you can just screw in right through the front face of that into the beam. 
and that works as well. And you want to do this because I was using the 15 gauge um, galvanized nails which are great but once everything starts acclimating and spreading apart um, things will sort of you know spread and you'll have gaps on things like that so if you put your screws and lock everything down with screws everything will stay really secure and tight so here's my vertical piece and this vertical piece is going to be the main support in the center of that span Okay, so when you're nailing your fence planks, you have nailings on the sides and one in the center. Like I say, you have to have that. So there's all my all my holes, and also I'm gonna countersink in there, and I'm gonna toe nail my screws in to the vertical supports to in the middle of my span. All right, now we're starting to run fence planks. So I did that whole front section first. And you see that elevation change, you want to make sure you figure out your elevation change and then start running your planks and then that top elevation will be a little bit of a smaller piece, but you want everything else to be the same size. So here's my corner and I'm going to show you basically how I do it. I cut off the, the factory edge at the bottom and I cut off the dog-eared fence plank as well. And I, I have one piece that I, that I make as my template per section because they're all going to be they're going to vary you know half inch quarter inch depending on your layout maybe a couple inches so each bay is going to have its own measurement so i'll cut one use it as a template and then i'll get a stack cut off the bottom set that template on there scribe it and then cut off the top make sure they're all is as good as can be i mean they're fence planks so if they're off just a hair it's no big deal no one will ever notice and you're going to be i'm going to be standing and painting it it's going to work out great so here's my galvanized nails. I'm, I'm using 15 gauge, one and three quarter galvanized nails to tack in all of these fence planks. And I, and I do use quite a bit of nails. I put about six on the outside edge and then six on the inside edge and then about six in the middle. So then I just continue the process. But you see that elevation change right there? So I do all my other elevation first and then that top piece, I'll just cut that piece if it's a little bit smaller than all the rest of the planks. It, it won't look weird there because it's on the top and it doesn't make like a whole row of my top plank one different measurement if I were to do it like on the bottom or something like that. All right, so here I am making a notch and putting my taper in grabbing my line and then you can see I'll have a square edge and then the dirt goes up and I'm gonna have it tapered there's my line going up to that angle and then sometimes you'll have to put a little piece of backing behind the fence plank so you can nail to that use a little leftover piece of cedar and just go ahead and tack it to your fence on the bottom and then you can tack your fence plank to that and then repeat the process for the next one and the next one and then we'll start throwing on the redwood cap all right so we have basically all of our fence planks on except the, you know that little corner and the front face I'm gonna go through and tighten it up and uh, notch around all of my concrete posts on the bottom just like that corner is I do the same thing to the other corner but we're basically all dialed in as far as our horizontal fence planks and now we're gonna start installing all of our uh, redwood caps but as you can see here, you can see how I locked it to the fence. So I put some steel tapping screws into the fence and then I put a little piece of angle on that wrought iron there to lock it in. All right, here's my redwood cap. So we got a piece of redwood two by six and we're just 45ing all of the, the outside corners, mitering all the outside corners, sort of match that corner there. And then we're just butt joining everything else. You can give it a 45 or you know a special little connection cut between all of your joints if you'd like it's a fence so I like to just do a bunch joint and lock it in with nails and screws and it comes out great you see that reveal right there I like to make sure my reveals are all match on each side and then I use a little piece of fence plank to give me my no matter what my minimum three-quarter inch reveal on the outside edge and there's that and then I also have make a template out of redwood I make a little 45 the inside and outside cut to use before I set all my pieces. All right, so here's a fence. No, sorry, a little gate. Here's a gate for a fence. So I'm just gonna basically make a frame and then I'm gonna put a 45 support in the middle of it. 
and then we're going to run our fence planks on that and there's our gate nice and simple um, I'm going to be making a clearer video that actually shows you how to make a gate uh, one of these days coming up soon but this is basically how you do it just get four boards screw them together make a square set a piece of two by four in the middle and make sure it supports your hinge side goes up and supports your your latch side all right and you see the redwood cap you can see how nice it's all coming together now so once all the redwood caps all secure and locked in I like to go back through and countersink those as well I like to countersink my corners all of my seams um, all of the 4x4 posts I like to lock it down as much as I can with all these screws because it really helps the fence stay secure and when it starts acclimating and stretching and things like that and, and uh, wanting to shrink on you it'll still maintain its its shape and look really well there it is looking great you can see the front porch I did a little detail I took some cedar fence planks made a custom door and just wrapped um, some two inch detail um, planks all around horizontal style made a little nook for my mailbox it's all easy stuff once you get going on it and you'll see how it all comes together once you start to get your own groove going but you can see what I did on the porch I added a couple more posts and then I just threw some more of those horizontal two by and uh, came out cool so I would putty everything all the fence all basically all the knots all the nails went through I had a gallon of wood putty Elmer's wood putty and just went through and just play it, put it all on with like a two inch putty knife and we're ready to go so now I got my respirator sander I'm going to get everything nice sand sanding we're going to sand it all down with like 150 grit and it comes out really nice and then we're going to prime it and paint it all right all done so you can see I painted it primed it and painted it but you can also stain it leave it a clear coat um, you can do a bunch of different things with this fence but there it is hope you enjoyed the video if so please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and share us with your social media thank you everybody Colonel Brawl peace Thank you.